very much. Onward. Are you looking at this flower when you do it? Yeah. Yeah. That's a self portrait there. I had to. And this part of it goes just there. Yeah. Oh, well, these were. These, this is But the terrific artist, Lee Eaton, who uh, has, you've painted 10 years, right? Only 10 years. Yes. How'd you start? I started because a friend of mine had been a painter and hadn't painted for quite a long time, and I discovered his work, and I said to him, I said, why don't you continue painting? Why are you not painting now? And he said, well, I don't have the time, and I don't have the supplies, and so, I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm very busy, but I will buy the supplies and I'll, I'll paint also. Oh, you really liked him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually appreciated his work. I liked him, but I also appreciated his work. So I bought the, we went to the art supply store and he chose a tiny little canvas and I bought the largest one that they had. And he said, oh, no, no, just starting painting, you have to start on a small canvas. And I said, no, I want a large one. And you liked it right away? I loved it. I loved it. I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and he had studied art. Uh, he went to the San Francisco Art Institute and studied in Greece, and yet he said I really taught him to paint and oil. What was your profession before that? I had been a designer. I was a designer with... Uh, um, we had a company called the Pulitzer Collection. Interior design? No, we did jewelry and fashion. Oh, so you were in the creative arts. Yes. Did, were, you, were you very good in art in school? Well, oddly enough, did much... Did you always draw the good lines and get A's? Well, actually, much to my parents' dismay, I had an elective course of drafting in school. And they had no idea why. And Quite frankly, I didn't either, uh, but I took drafting and loved it, and that really is uh, sort of the, the groundwork for my design work and painting. All right, you start 10 years ago. When did you think you were good? Well... Oh, do you? <laughs> Are you still getting there? <laughs> well, actually, um, I believe in my technique, and I believe that it's, it is something that is unique. Um, did you know that right away? I, I really did. I knew that I was working with the texture of the oil paint uh, in an unusual way, and I, I just had the, the concept of it before I ever put the first brush to the canvas. Did any artist have a great effect on you? Um, not prior to my painting. I have to admit, I really had had very little in the way of, of training or training or literature or reading about them. Yeah, no, I had very little. Uh, and therefore, this is not an involvement. You were painting beautiful stuff like this from the get-go? Yes, I, I still have, I retained my first painting, and um, I wasn't... I wasn't as clear about my composition, but with the texture and what is now called scintillism, that I was very clear about, and it shows. What is scintillism? Scintillism is, it's all a prima painting, and that's where all of the layers of the paint, the oil paint, are completely wet, and it's the first application. So I don't have time to go back and sort of let the paint dry and then change it and paint over it. I have to finish the painting in the first application while all the layers are completely wet. And after the first take. That's exactly uh, right. And you're usually successful, or do you throw away a lot? I have, there have only been really one, one incident that I can recall where I was painting someone who, who I was um, involved with, and he made a comment about the painting, and I got really upset and scraped the canvas. And broke that up. <laughs> and Do you mostly paint things rather than people? No, actually, I spend a lot of time uh, doing portraits as well. Um, By commission? Yes, yes, I do. I've done a number of commission paintings. Um, of course, you might have... Uh, caught some of my work during the 96 uh, convention, the Republican National Convention. Is that as fulfilling when you're hired to do something as when you do it yourself? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it is. I really do enjoy it very much because, I, first of all, I will not do a painting of someone who I can't relate to and appreciate. 
and um, and once I once I know them and appreciate their essence, then I feel that I can put it on the canvas. How soon before you sold your first? Actually, I was very fortunate because when I painted my first painting, um, I had a business at the time, and I hung the paintings in the window, and they were visible from the street. And I had people actually walking by and asking if they could buy the paintings. And shortly thereafter, I had my first exhibition. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was given by Mick Jagger's hmm. publicist at the time. Um, and where are you sold? All over? Yes. You've yes, seen New am. York and big oh, cities? And yes, I am. I hmm. had my second exhibition in New York, um, a wonderful woman by the name of Elizabeth Ives Bartholet. Um, she actually brought Cubism to America, and she gave me my second exhibition there in New York. How would you describe your work? I mean, vibrant comes to mind. Yes. Um, Colors. Well, that's, that's really what I want it to be. Um, it's very important for my work to be uplifting. I know that there are a lot of artists who um, have created work that, that are you know, much darker and have less... Um, vibrant energy, but that's really what my work is all about. I want to enhance the energy of, of anyone who is experiencing it. Do you know where you're going when you start? Yes. yes you, I you got do. it all mapped out in your mind. This is not impromptu. Well, I do, but I've had certain occasions where I've had, uh, I've really had sort of blocks in the canvas. And remember, this is a race for time when I'm painting. If any of the layers start to dry, I have to scrape it and start over. Um, so I've had certain areas of the canvas, oddly enough, that I just couldn't seem to work through, and so I had to create. I remember one painting of a garden. I had no choice other than to put a, a, a tree outside of the building because it just appeared. And mm -hmm. later I found out through the owners of the garden that a tree had been cut down about a year earlier in the exact same spot. That's scary. I know. Well, why I know. put that pressure on yourself of having to painting it on wet? It's. I'll tell you. It's to me. It's. It's just the way I create. And if the pa oil paint isn't as it is, fresh out of the tube, then you can't manipulate it in the same way, and you can't create the uh, the textured surfaces. And. I've had a lot of people tell me that even blind people can appreciate my work because they can feel it. They can feel the outlines of the subjects. Yeah, and you can. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you uh, paint, like, every day? No, I don't paint every day. Uh, once I begin a painting, I really can't stop until I finish it. And so I really have to wait until I'm just ready to, to begin. Oh, you, might you be driving in a car on a highway and get an idea? Oh, that I definitely do. do. That I definitely do. And then I'm obsessed until, until I get my painting completed. And uh, once, I, once I have the canvas sketched, then it's finished in my mind. I just have to apply it. The biggest kick a successful painter must have, in addition to pride in her own work, must be knowing that you're in hundreds of homes, just you and that person, yeah. or, those, or those families. It really and That's a very shared moment. It is. It You've is. got it going every day. Yes, and fortunately for me, I have, uh, I've been able to get to know a lot of the people who have collected my work. And we remain in contact with one another. Well, you, do, you want to know who buys your and you will call a gallery and find out who bought your painting? A lot, yes. Call them? yes, I do. That's one of Why? The, one of the because they're like my children. I want to be able to keep track of my children, and it's important for me. It really is. Why so many flowers? Well, of course, we're we're in here. Um, I actually do. Aside from the portraits, I do some of the other types of work. I've started a series of mandala paintings, and they're, they're mandala paintings with, with modern symbolism. They're sort of inspired by the 13th and 14th century Tibetan paintings and, and different works of art. And, uh, but this, this, you know, these particular paintings have the... Beautiful. Paintings. Now that you are a painter, do you appreciate painting more? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. 
Now I look at the masters. Of course, I, I hear a, a number of names. Uh, people say, oh, your work looks like this artist and your work looks like that artist. And, and I must say, uh, probably the one that stands out most in my mind and in my heart is Van Gogh's work. Um, he did, some of his paintings were all of Prima paintings, some of the smaller ones that he did out in the field. Uh, but most of the time he would come back and wait until it dried and then come back in and outline with either black or darker colors. And that's one of the things that I don't do. And plus, I don't think that uh, he had the intentional texture and use the, the many different brushes the way I do. So yeah, any money I <laughs> Well, that's right. And of course, he wasn't appreciated in his lifetime. He just sold the painting. His brother I know, one, right? I know. And I've thought about that so many times, and, and I'm just very thankful that I've been blessed to be able to, uh, to be appreciated in my lifetime uh, by the collectors. And, and when, when you paint, do you paint for you? And then if I like it, I like it? Or are you painting with the thought, will they like it? I paint for both. It's hard to do that. Yes, it is hard to do, but I must say I paint for both. It's, I'm not going to finish it until I'm happy with it. Um, but I, I do keep in mind what, what I know of the person and what I believe will make them happy too. It doesn't, that doesn't mean that it, it changes my inspiration because I'm either inspired to paint it or I'm not. You won't paint something you don't like. No. Just if I wanted to paint me a block of, uh, of uh, cubes back to back. Absolutely not. No. You can't do it. Do you sculpt? No. Yes, I do. You like that? Yes. Um, actually, my sculptures are a total departure from what you would imagine. Uh, they are more or less found art. And, um, what do you mean? Well, they're, they're made of silica rock and, and coils, and they actually offset electromagnetic pollution. So it's, it's something quite unique. Are you unique. afraid of it? No, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, quite the opposite. It will actually create sort of a safe space. I know you've, you've heard about the harmful uh, sure. for cell phones and things like that, and you can get a little device to attach to your phone. Well, this is a sculpture that does that on a much wider scale. Do you, do you ever say to yourself, I should have started sooner. Actually, no, because I believe that I had to live a certain amount of my life so that I could really put that into my work. And I think it's very, very important. So you wouldn't have been as good at 25? I don't think that I would have been. Because how much of it is you? This is you, isn't this it? This is me. This is me. Uh, all of it is me. All of my work is me. And uh, whether it's the paintings or the sculpture or songs or whatever it is, when it's something that I produce, it's, it's me. How do painters determine prices? That fascinates me. Well, actually... Um, is I've it time put in, necessarily? Well, I, when I had my first exhibition, I determined the uh, prices because I actually enjoyed the paintings myself and I wasn't going to part with them. Uh, yeah, so I, I started actually, you know, not worrying, not even thinking about whether they would sell or not, but just saying, well, you know, I might consider selling these paintings for this amount. And I was very fortunate because I, I was, uh, had a fair you amount of Do you still do that? Life. Well, I do. I do, but also Elizabeth Eyes Barthollet, when she gave my second exhibition, uh, she was a very well-known and important appraiser for a lot of the major museums around the country, and she actually set my prices considerably higher than you I had did. priced my paintings. So. And art, of course, increases in value. Yes. Yes, it does. And Is that kind of weird that you'll be worth more when you're gone? <laughs> Well, it's the truth when you can't produce. Everything well, goes up. I know, I know this is true. I I hope that my at least my family will be able to mm -hmm. benefit from that because they have they've been with me. I mean, when you're an artist, there are a lot of times that you have to spend sacrificing because there are many other things that you could be doing, but you travel places and spend time and like going to Puerto Rico and spending time there to paint in the rainforest and and exploring, and my family has sort of trekked along with me. Is that a favorite place to paint? Actually, I, I have to say, I really enjoyed the light when I was in Puerto Rico. And the light in Puerto Rico? Yes, the light for painting there is just exceptional. I can understand why Gauguin in Tahiti 
must have enjoyed it. A lot of the paintings that, uh, that we're sitting with right now were actually painted in Puerto Rico. So you see that special light that comes out. And, and I've tried in other areas like the desert, but it's just not quite the same. There seemed to be a richness there. So you never had to suffer. Well, to get the image of the painter, somebody you mentioned Van Gogh, who suffered more than him. Actually, um, I, well, I can't really say that There's I have. never a struggle for you. It you sold pretty much right away. Well, I was fortunate. <clears throat> I did sell pretty much right away, but I had other other things in my personal life that that uh, had me struggle and got me to the point that uh, I had the emotions and I was able to. Uh, or brought me to the point where I was able to bring forth these emotions on the canvases and in my other work. So I, I feel like I've paid my dues as an artist with my life. Are you always happy when you're painting? Um, not necessarily. I, most of the time I am. And when I'm not, it should. Thank you, Leah. I will proud, be proud to hang you in my home. Oh, thank you I don't so mean much. Literally. <laughs> in your work. Thank you, Larry. Lee. <laughs>